Busch Stadium, St. Louis. It's cold, 40 degrees for the championship game. The Cardinals and the Brewers, and to share the excitement, 53,000 partisan St. Louis fans. As NBC World Series presentation brought to you by ColecoVision, the arcade quality home video game system. And by Polaroid, the fun starts when you share Polaroid Instant Pictures. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bush Stadium, St. Louis. I'm Dick Kenberg. I'll be joining Joe Garagiola and Tony Kubek with the play-by-play. -play. It all began eight months ago in the heat of February in spring training sites, and now it boils down, culminates into one game for baseball's championship. The starting pitchers, Pete Vukovic for Milwaukee, Joaquin Andohar, Sorny and all for the St. Louis Cardinals. And who might be the Sandy Ambrose or Billy Martin or Country Slaughter or Bill Mazeroski of 1982? With me is Tom Seaver. Your thoughts on this final game? Well, I don't think that Whitey Herzog for the Cardinals could have orchestrated it any better. He has his best starting pitcher going. He's playing his in, in his home ballpark, and he's got a rested Bruce Suter in the bullpen. On the other side of the coin, the Milwaukee Brewers, they went all the way to the end of the season with the Baltimore Orioles, and they won it. They went to the playoffs and had to go to the last game with the Angels. They won it. Now, of course, the last day, the last game of the season of 1982, we'll just have to wait and see, Dick. This 82 World Series has had its unusual moments. It certainly hasn't followed any typical form. It's had its highs and lows. And with his review of the Brewers and Cardinals through the first six games, here's Bob Costas. The late season report said Bob Forsch was sharp, Mike Caldwell struggling. But the Brewers jumped all over Forsch. Simmons a home run, Molitor five hits, Gout four more. Meanwhile, Caldwell spins a masterful three-hitter, 10-0 Milwaukee. Looked like they'd go up 2-0 in the next game. They had an early three-run lead. But the book on Darryl Porter says he always pulls the ball. Look at the overshift. In the midst of this crucial Cardinal rally, though, Porter goes the opposite way against Don Sutton. It's a two-run double to left field. That ties the ball game and then sets the stage for another critical moment. With Raleigh Fingers unavailable, Pete Ladd, who had been very effective in the American League Championship Series, has to pitch in relief. He walks Lonnie Smith and then pinch hitter Steve Braun back-to-back. -back. In comes George Hendrick with what proves to be the winning run. The series is tied. Now to Milwaukee for game three. Willie McGee is a speedster. He's not a home run hitter, right? Don't tell that to Pete Bukovic. Two home runs by McGee off Bukovic. McGee was known as a good defensive center fielder, and that held true in the ninth as he robbed Gorman Thomas of a home run. But perhaps the full impact of Game 3's most important play wasn't felt until Game 4. The Ted Simmons smash off the leg of Joaquin Andohar knocks him out of the box, forces Bruce Suter to pitch two and a third innings of relief, and leaves him unavailable on Saturday afternoon. It looked at first as if the Cardinals wouldn't need it. Defensive plays like this one by Ozzy Smith were helping Dave LaPointe along. Look at the Wizard of Oz turn a base hit bid into a double play. And the Cardinals were playing classic Whitey ball. Tommy Herr's long drive to center field is no mere sacrifice fly. It's a two-run sacrifice fly. McGee will score from third, and Ozzy Smith is following him all the way around from second base. But now comes the seventh inning, and Ben Oglevy sends a seemingly harmless grounder toward Keith Hernandez. Keith, a nice play on what turns out to be a bad hop. The point over to cover, and he'll drop it. That opens the gates for six unearned runs. Bear tried, Hot tried, Lottie tried, Suter watched. The Cardinals lost at 7-5. McClure, a relief hero for the Brewers. Game five, Porsche against Caldwell again. Porsche once more can't handle the Brewers. And while Caldwell isn't anywhere near as sharp as he was in game one, his defense keeps bailing him out. This was the most important play of all. Cecil Cooper diving to his right to rob Darrell Porter and end the seventh inning Cardinal rally. All the glowing reports were dead right about this man, though. A second four-hit game for Robin Yount. This opposite field home run is part of it. Back to St. Louis, and amidst the raindrops, it's the Redbirds who turn into wall bangers. Three extra base hits for Dane Orge, homers for Porter and Hernandez, and another big surprise, rookie John Stuper, a four-hitter to outpitch the great veteran Don Sutton. 13-1 St. Louis, series tied at three. Which brings us to game seven. Joaquin Andohar against Pete Bukovic, but what if either should falter? Dick Enberg and I will talk to the managers about their plans when we return to Bush Stadium in St. Louis in just a moment. The conditions cold for Game 7. 
the temperatures could drop to in the mid 30s before games end. Well, many of you have been high in your praise of our montage of shots, over 650 of them in one minute and 40 seconds, a review of American and baseball history in this century. And once again, this baseball prelude. Additions from 1982, Caldwell's cool from game one, Suter's sinker to save game two, Andohar's agony, St. Louis won game three, the points costly bobble in game four, in game five, Robin Young's second four hit game, and last night for the Cardinals, the rookie, Su Super, was super. And a capacity crowd here at Bush Stadium on a cool, crisp evening. And they're rooting for their Redbirds. The lineup for the Milwaukee Brewers leading off will be Paul Molitor at third base. The shortstop, Robin Yount, batting second. Batting third, the first baseman, Cecil Cooper. Behind the plate, in the cleanup spot, Ted Simmons. Ben Oglevy is in left field. Gorman Thomas in center field. The designated hitter, Roy Howell, right fielder Charlie Moore bats eighth, and batting ninth, second baseman Jim Gentner. And Joe, when the Cardinals took the field behind Andu, I just saw something I've never seen in baseball history. Ozzie Smith, between the pitcher's mound and second base, did a full front flip on the run. Came down on two feet, did a black back flip. I didn't know he was an acrobat, did you? Yeah, we all did. <laughs> Here's the defense. Lonnie Smith, Willie McGee, George Hendricks, Ken Obergefell, Ozzy Smith, Tom Herr, Keith Hernandez, Daryl Porter, and Joaquin Andujar. There were many who didn't think Andujar would start. Hit on the below the right kneecap. There is the postseason record of Andujar. 2-0. 13 innings pitched. In game three, he worked six in the third innings, allowed three hits, no runs, one walk, struck out three. St. Louis won that game, six to two, it was in Milwaukee. It was a hot shot, one hopper off the bat of Simmons that got on Dehar. And I must say, a lot of courage on that mound on this side, and we all know about the courage of Vukovic. Should be quite a night. Hard thrower on Dehar. Been clocked up to 94 miles an hour. Tough slider. Fork ball on occasion. And when he throws his last warm-up pitch before the throw by Porter down to second base, her, he lets it all out. In fact, he says Juan Marichal, one of his countrymen and I think should be a Hall of Famer, told him to do it to get himself psyched up. Hop Kittle said also every time a pitcher throws, and this is his theory, throws a pitch to home plate, if you throw it hard enough, the blood will rush into your hand. He says that's when a pitcher knows he's ready. And that's just another theory. So we'll maybe have you take a look at walking onto our what he does. He's 
Got two more pitches coming. It should be this one where he really lets it all hang out. He's kind of revving up the engine. Let's see if he does it. Meditation. Sight. There he goes. Here he comes. There he goes. <laughs> he is a showman. I tell you, we may need a big mustard jar before this day's over with all the hot dogs we've seen so far. Paul Molitor will lead it off. Molitor, nine base hits, 27 times at bat, hitting 333. No home runs. He has driven in three runs. And by now, if you've been with us from game one, the first pitch is usually one he jumps on. And the opposition, aware of it, will pitch accordingly. Here's the first pitch of game seven coming up. High fly ball, right field. One out. And Molitor's bat broke right off in his hands. He had about four inches going down the first base on the fly ball, and the rest flew right back behind home plate. Here is Robin Yount. Yount, 11 for 25, one home run, six runs batted in, hitting 440. Andahar averages 1.7 walks per nine innings pitched. 4.6 strikeouts. That's his 1982 record. Strike one. A hard thrower who does not usually walk many, and that's what Hub Kittle was concerned about. He said, I'm not concerned about how hard he throws his slider or fastball. I'm concerned whether his control will be off if he feels a little pain in that leg. Outside, one ball and one strike. Robin Young. The only shortstop in American League history to lead the league in both total bases, 367, and a slugging percentage of 578. He's a franchise. Two balls, one strike, one out. Game just underway. Top half of the first. Molitor hit the first pitch, a fly ball to right. Fell at third, has it to throw. It is in time. Two outs. The batter is Cecil Cooper. Cooper, one home run, five runs batted in, hitting 280 in the World Series, seven base hits, 25 times at bat. And he has been a magician with the glove. I think this fellow may start to get the credit, Tony, that he richly deserves and has been overlooked for so many years. Well, I think all those in the baseball fraternity have never overlooked what he's done. Right. Those of us who've seen him play a lot, I've seen him play 20, 30 games this year. A great deal of respect for his ability in all areas. Strike one by Andahar. Andahar so far, you would never know he was hit on the right leg by the hot shot off the bat of Simmons. He's pumping hard. Outside, one and one. He's coming right at him. He's challenging. He's not flinching. Determined on the heart. Obergfeld, deep at third, long throw. It is low. He gets some nice play by Hernandez at first base. One, two, three for Milwaukee. Top of the first. We go into the bottom half of the first. Milwaukee nothing. St. Louis coming to bat. Inning ending on a good play, Tony. We've seen good defense and we've seen awful defense so far in this World Series. It's been really unpredictable. 29-year-old right-hander Pete Vukovic will face this St. Louis Cardinal batting order. It's an identical copy of that used by Whitey Herzog. Pretty good formula, in fact, in 13-1 win last night. Lonnie Smith to lead it off. 
Ken Obrick fell at third base, hitting second. Keith Hernandez, a hot hitter the last two games. Right fielder George Hendrick in the cleanup spot. Catcher Daryl Porter, one of the candidates with this series MVP. Designated hitter Dane Orge, seven for 14, hitting 500 in the series. Center fielder Willie McGee had two home runs off Vukovic in Milwaukee. Second baseman Tom Herr and shortstop Ozzie Smith, two switch hitters in the bottom end of the order. Like the entire season, Harvey Keene keeps his team the same. Ben Ogilvie, Norman Thomas, Charlie Moore in the outfield, Paul Molitor, Robin Young, Jim Gantner, Cecil Cooper, Ted Simmons, the catcher, and Pete Kukovic, the pitcher. Pete Vukovic, who tied Larry Gore and Jeff Son for second with 18 wins. Lamar Hoyt won 19 games to lead in that department. Faces Lonnie Smith. Fly ball, right field. Charlie Moore is there. Like Molitor, Lonnie Smith hit the first pitch to the right fielder. One up, one pitch, one out. And Joe, because of all the rain last night, the field is still a little bit squishy. Outfield especially, so balls will still scoot if they're hit on the ground or in the gaps. Ken Obergfell is a batter. Obergfell, no home runs, one run better than any seven for 21 in the World Series, a 333 average. Ball one. Vukovic lost his last five decisions of the year. Strike, one ball, one strike. Joe, on September 20th, Vukovic pitched the ball game 11 innings against the Boston Red Sox, where he really had a rough time, faced some tough situations, and since that time, his shoulder has not been well. He's had cortisone shots. He's refused to get out of the rotation. He's been pitching with some pain. See how many fastballs he can get up there tonight. Very important that they can't sit on his off-speed stuff. Two balls and two strikes to count on Ken Obergfell. In the last game against the Cardinals, game three, Eight and two-thirds innings, six hits, six runs, four were earned, two home runs by Willie McGee, three walks and a strikeout. Foul ball out of play, count remains at two and two, one out, bottom of the first, no score. Vukovic with a great straight change, slider, sinker, he'll ride a fastball. There was the breaking ball, slider, low inside, good spot, strikeout. First one for Vukovic, two up, two down. If Pete Vukovic can keep the ball down in this area, he's one pitcher, he'll be tough. He's one pitcher, Joe, who likes to pitch from behind for some unknown reason. I guess probably because he can throw that change up and breaking ball over any time he wants to when he's behind in the count. The only other pitcher I ever heard say that was Murray Dixon with the Cardinals. He says because when a hitter gets ahead of him, he's looking for a particular pitch, and I can fool him. Ball one. And when you look at Murray Dixon's record, you'd have to believe him. Hernandez having his 29th birthday today. One ball and one strike. Behind the plate, Lee Wire. And we look at Vukovic. Foul ball out of play, straight change, and it's one ball, two strikes. You look at Vukovic's hat, and you figure that both Vukovic and Caldwell don't exactly go to a designer cap man. Two balls and two strikes, but they don't pay you for how you look up there as we look at George Hendrick. It's what you do with the baseball. High hopper. It'll be a tough close play. Base hit. Vukovic has a pretty good sinker or something going tonight because that ball just dropped off the table. Hernandez beats it in the home plate. Gantner can't get it on the short hop, so the artificial surface comes into play very quickly in this ball game. Here is George Henrik, who is 7 for 23, a 304 average. No home runs, four runs battered in. He's been hitting a lot of balls up the middle. Hernandez is back. The Cardinals know through their scouting reports that Vukovic, he will throw to bases first and second, but doesn't throw the ball hard there very often. You can see him staring Hernandez down right now. 
Hernandez stole 19 bases in 1982, was caught 11 times. He has a good lead, one foot on the artificial surface. That's the yardstick. High pop foul behind the plate. Simmons coming back, no play. Last pitch by Vukovic, I don't know if it was a sinker he got up or what happened, but it was registered on the radar gun at about 81 miles an hour. We had Andujar's slider at 85 in the first inning. Vukovic, a bear down kind of pitcher. Pop fly in the infield. Simmons, foul territory, taking charge, makes the play and made it easily. Henrik fouls to Simmons, ends the inning. So we complete one full inning score here. Milwaukee nothing, St. Louis nothing. Simmons, Oglebe, and Thomas do up from Milwaukee. As we view our colleagues from Japan, a hello to those around the world who are covering the World Series. It certainly is a World Series when you consider all of those, not only the radio, television, the writers, photographers that are communicating their stories back to all corners of this world. Top half of the second inning, and here is Ted Simmons to lead it off. Simmons with two home runs, three runs batted in. He's four for 19. That's a 211 batting average. And after those first two ball games with the home runs, the Cardinal pitchers almost refused to pitch to Ted Simmons on orders from Whitey Herzog. He said, we are not going to let Simmons beat us. Left field, Lonnie Smith makes the play. And Joe, I think they'll continue to do that throughout this game because Ogilvy and Thomas have not, well, they've got one extra base hit between them, Ogilvy and Thomas, three RBIs. Ogilvy does not yet have an RBI in this series. He's in the batter's box now, hitting 217, 5 for 23. If you're wondering how fast that last pitch was, 91 miles. So Andujar, who looks like he's throwing hard, we just checked with the radar, and anything over 90, obviously, he is at his best. You can also ball one. see down low in the strike zone how he can go with that two-seam fastball and sink the ball, make it run away from left-handed hitters. Sometimes the left-handers, you go with a four-seam and come up and in. One ball, one strike. So it appears that both Vukovic and Andujar brought it with them tonight. And that is 90 and what is considered to be the slower of the two guns most used. Figure four, five miles per hour difference. Oh, the fast gun, that would have registered about 94. Two balls and one strike with one man out. The on-deck batter, Gorman Thomas. One out. Obrick fell. Big hop. In time. Two up, two down. Andujar has retired the first five men he has faced. Joe, I'm always amazed when you see, I see Andujar pitch a hard thrower that he walks so few. And I always think, well, of course, Tom Seaver right in our booth who's a hard thrower who's uh, walked in. His pitch has always been very low. Like Robin Roberts who threw hard. And you can go on back even further than that. Well, testimony to the fact he has the good fastball is the fact that four of the five men have hit the ball to the opposite field. The only one who has pulled it, and that was uh, weekly, was Robin Young. I'm waiting for somebody to try to bunt to see what happens. The wire, you could hear him say, that's outside, ball one. Gorman Thomas, three for 22. He's 0 for three. Uh, no home runs, three uh, runs batted in. 136 is the average. strike the count on Thomas. Thomas Bat has been cold a good part of September through the League Championship Series. Now the World Series. The home run ratio. Lowenstein, one for every 13 point. Reggie Jackson, Gorman Thomas. Two balls in a strike, two outs, nobody on. Top of the second. Game seven 
on deck batter Roy Howell. He's the designated hitter. Cardinal DHs in this series because the Warriors have done much better than the Brewers. Two balls and two strikes. Anduhar and the Houston organization before coming over, really on the advice of Hub Kidd, who had in the Dominican Republic winter ball, it was less than a 500 pitcher before he came here. Sidearm, he likes to do that, misses, and it's three and two. What Kittle has taken away from Anduhar is changing his delivery so often, his release point. He has got him throwing either overhand or side on like the last pitch. Nothing in between. High fly ball. Left center field. Willie McGee taking charge. Makes the play. And Andahar works a perfect second inning. He's retired with six penalty in face. We move to the bottom of the second inning. Milwaukee nothing. St. Louis nothing. It'll be Porter, Orange, and McGee for St. Louis. Background, Bush Stadium, St. Louis. And a reminder, Friday night lineup on NBC. Hope you'll start at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Enjoy Matthew Starr, Knight Rider, and Remington Steel. <laughs> Daryl Porter leads it off. Porter, 7 for 23. One home run, four runs batted in. A 304 average in the World Series. Strike one. And the press box in the ballpark rocked with the news that Billy Martin was fired by the Oakland A's. Didn't get it a slow curveball. Well, the next question you ask, will that remarriage be made in heaven one more time with Mr. Steinbrenner and Billy? Is that three times or four? I, I lost track. I don't know if it made it in heaven. <laughs> Might be made at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Two strikes, the count on Daryl Porter. Came to the ballpark, it was a rumor and it was verified by a wire story. And the press box was really buzzing. Billy Martin. Out. And so is Daryl Porter. Fastball in the inside corner. Two off speed pitches and a blazer, and he's got two strike cuts. So Vukovic, as we said earlier, he brought it with him. Andujar has worked two perfect innings. And starting out like we're in for quite a night. And it appears from that last fastball that came back over the inside corner that Vukovic's arm is sound enough and he can throw enough fastballs to keep him honest. Here is Dane Orge, 7 for 14. Up the middle. Knocked down by Gantner. The throw is not in time. A base hit for Dane Orge. He's 8 for 15. Now, Brother Garth, the Toronto Blue Jays back home, taping this World Series for his brother Dane. I think he'll have some fun looking at those base hits when this series is over with. Artificial surface hit. Gatner, as the ball picks up speed, can only dive. Orange has another one. What a hitter he is. He reminds me from the other side, of course, of Lou Pinella. Orange is on it first. Here is Willie McGee, 5 for 20. Two home runs, both off Vukovic. Last ball is high, ball one. Molitor at third base is in a couple steps, protecting against the bunt. McGee with just great speed. They play him straight away. There you see Molitor. Lead by Orge. And it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. One out, no score, bottom of the second. Straight away center field. Gorman Thomas should have it. He does, and there are two outs. Joe, I think only a guy who has the feel for pitching that Avukovic has can make the kinds of pitches when he's behind as often as he does. You look at his innings pitch to hits, more hits than innings pitch, 100 and some walks during the regular season thrown in. 
pitches ball games with five and six walks, 10 or 12 hits, and he can pitch you a, a one or two run ball game. He makes the pitch when he has to. Tommy Herr, the batter, and remember batting right handed, Herr wore the protective uh, shin guard on his back foot, the right, right leg, and now batting left handed, there it is on the front foot. Either side, he protects those wheels. This is a pretty good combination that with two outs, you have to look for it because even if Ord should be throwing out, Herr would lead off the inning, so they've got something going if they want to use it. Holding. Outside, ball one. There's the protective shin guard that Tommy Herr wears. Batting left-handed there, and sneakers on the artificial surface. Infielders wear them all, but really, Lonnie Smith, he wears the cleats even on the turf. Good hitters kind of shy away from it because they like that footing in the batter's box. 1-0 pitch. Blocked nicely by Simmons. It's two balls and no strikes. Now her, as we look at the third base umpire, Davey Phillips. Simmons asked for the appeal. Some people have said that it's a, it's a cop up on the home plate umpire's part. Actually, if the catcher requests it. Two balls in one strike. Orange is not a base stealing threat, but more to break up the infield, if anything. Whitey Herzog has really done a job running these Cardinals. He's run them right into the seventh game of the World Series. You can't operate any better than that. That's one of the ways that Whitey Herzog came to this ball club. His general manager, manager, he said when he came over, he didn't see anybody going first to third. Couldn't score from second base on a legitimate base hit. Went for speed as he did when he was with Kansas City. He went around that time, says Lee Wire. Two balls and two strikes to count. Vukovic has struck out two. Both hits by the Cardinals, infield hits. Hernandez beat one out to Gantner, and Orange hit one to the right of Gantner, who came up with the ball but couldn't make the play. No score. Vukovic. Even a good look. Watch him just peer over that shoulder. Outside, three and two. Brother, when he looks over there, <laughs> you don't want to run before you see the whites of their eyes. You can see him with Vukovic with that shot. Let's see what Pete does in this count. When he stays with a fastball, is he hit two and two, or he throws that great straight change he has so much confidence in? I think fastball. What do you think? I don't know. I really don't know, but he can do anything if he wants to. He can throw the breaking ball, fastball, or change up over. He let up on it, he changed up on it, walked him, and that puts Orge at second base. Her at first base, there are two outs, and it brings up Ozzie Smith. Vukovic now wants time to talk to his catcher, Ted Simmons, or is he gonna get a new ball? I've never really seen a pitcher walk all the way down to the catcher. Usually the catcher meets him halfway or goes out. Pete does all kinds of things to psych the opposition. He's also showing that he's in control not only of himself but of the game. A catcher can merely suggest a pitch. The pitcher is the guy who has to make the final decision. You can question it all you want, like three and two. You say, why would he throw a change? Because he felt like throwing a change, and that's good enough for most managers. Ozzie Smith, the batter. Two outs, base runners at first and second. No score. Low, and it's ball one. Dean Orge at second base. Tommy Herr is on at first base. Now Vukovic right in form. He usually pitches himself in a lot of trouble and right back out.
Line foul. Count one ball, one strike. You wonder, Joe, if this is the kind of team, the Cardinal team, that you want to pitch from behind on because although Orge is not a base hitter down at second base, where's it first? You walk him like he has a tendency to do, throw a lot of pitches and get behind the count. You've got a running team out there. You can do it with some teams that don't run. These Cardinals will take advantage of those base runners. Here's the 1 1 pitch. High hopper up the middle. Robin Yao coming over, can't make a play. Bases are loaded, another infield hit. So we've seen a couple of artificial surface hits in this ball game already. There's another one. Yao comes across, takes a glance. At third base, really, in case the runner, Orange, had made a wide third turn, he would have gone that way. Watch him look over. See what the runner at third is doing. He knew he didn't have a play at first base, and the Cardinals have the bases loaded. Here's Lonnie Smith. And in Smith, Vukovic is facing a man who punished him in Milwaukee. Lonnie had a double and a triple facing the Milwaukee right-hander in game three. Off the end of the bat, a change of speed, and he was way out in front. Well, Vukovic deck got hit by the number six and number eight hitters the last time. Six hitter was Lonnie Smith, you mentioned, but he was hitting eight, hit a couple of home runs. The rest of the lineup, he handled pretty easily. Yeah, this is the kind of hitting two infield scratches and a walk, and you just, uh, for Milwaukee fans, worried someone will really get a hold of one. High fly ball, right field. Vukovic should be out of it. Moore makes the catch. So, he gives you a thrill. But the bottom of the second ends, the Cardinals do not score. We complete two innings of uh, baseball here, and it's Milwaukee nothing, the Cardinals nothing, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Vukovic, feeling he was out of the inning on that fly ball, had some words with Lee Wire. You don't think he's bearing down? I don't know what he said, but I'm sure Lee Wire got the message. For the play-by-play -play now, here's Dick Enberg. Thank you, Joe. Joaquin Andohar has retired six in a row and gets Roy Howell on that first fastball. Howell in search of his first World Series hit. Will be followed by Charlie Moore and Jim Gantner. Remember in game three, the Brewers managed only three hits off Andohar in six and a third innings. Howell back 0-2. Two. two of those by Jim Gantner. The third when Ted Simmons one hopper struck Andujar in the knee and knocked him out of the game with the injury. The Cardinals defense because of Andujar's fastball shading Howell slightly toward left field. McGee in center. Lonnie Smith down toward the left field line. Straight away in the infield. Two strike pitch. There are some similarities between these two pitchers both 29 both right handed but the most interesting on a 44 degree night game time both are pitching without an undershirt just the bare arms all the rest of the players on both sides have the long sleeves what was that I'll say protect that arm here's Andohar and Vukovic just out there as if it's 85 degrees this will be an interesting pitch as we look at the sleeveless Andohar see if uh, Porter goes outside with him two and two inside now the count is full. You know, Dick, that uh, sleeveless day you're talking about, Jim Cott does that. Mike Marshall, who did the brilliant job on the split-fingered fastball of Suter, he called it a one-fingered forkball, gives you a good explanation. I can't really do it scientifically about sweat and evaporation, and he has proved to many people, including Cott, the best way to go is without a sweatshirt. Foul, and it remains three and two. Well, I'll tell you, in the pregame presentation, standing down on that wet carpet with a bit of a breeze and this temperature, it was unpleasantly cool and I have as much sweaters and long underwear as I could gather for this one difference is you got a tape machine when we make a mistake we can do it again he can't so he's a little juiced up <laughs> he, he's, he's ready Wow watch out that one ricocheting through some cold hands and now stinging fingers behind the Milwaukee dugout Harvey Keen is it his year Taking over for Buck Rogers at midseason, or will it be Whitey Herzog's team that gets the World Series championship ring? Three and two. Well, and there we 
saw proof of whether or not Andujar's leg as well. He got over there in a hurry with no trace of a lip. But they're he really him. got off the mound. He stopped as soon as he caught the ball, and you can bet that's what Hernandez is asking. Him. Watch him get over here. Good sinker ball that Powell dry, jams into the dirt. Look at Andujar. Not one trace of a limp. He got a little bit off stride, hit the side of the bag almost in foul territory, something a pitcher doesn't want to do. You can get spiked or stepped on or run over. He misplaced the bag there for a second. It did get out of the way. Of course, that play was so critical in game four when Dave LaPointe trying to fish for the bag dropped the ball and the Cardinals ahead five and one saw Milwaukee score six unearned runs and a critical seven five victory. Charlie Moore fouls it away. They're still late on him. Moore was late fouled it off to the left side and Moore's first swing sends it into the first base crowd. Anduar has retired seven in a row four by ground balls. No score top of the third inning. The deciding game 1982 Moore with a big rip. That ball really ran in on him, just tied Charlie Moore up. Not only does he throw hard on Duhar, but you can see the movement on his ball, especially from this center field camera. Fouled again, two strikes. Moore, one of those unsung players in this series, he's played superbly. An average of 348. He has eight hits, three of them doubles, flawless right field play. Excellent throw last night that could well have nailed a run at the plate. Made that diving catch in Milwaukee that stands out with Willie McGee's as the best defensive gems by an outfielder in this series. So it's been a good October for Charlie Moore. Up the middle, her. Gets him on a close call. And if you remember game one, that's the adjustment that the middle infielders have made. Both Ozzie Smith and Tommy Herr, out of respect to some of the speed they didn't think these Brewers had. Charlie Moore won. They have moved in four or five steps. Game one, that was probably a base hit. Going back to that 10-0 victory by Milwaukee in the first game of the series, Smith and Herr often were found beyond that outfield line. But uh, to certain hitters now, they're playing a more normal position. Gatner was the one man who could solve Andohar in his first game in Milwaukee. He was two for two. He too has had a good series hitting 333. Outfield infield straight away. Out of play off to the left. One of the oddities the Cardinal club. Leading the Brewers in extra base hits. So far in this series, Milwaukee has scored 30 runs, St. Louis 33. Extra base hits, St. Louis 21, Milwaukee 17. 17 errors in this World Series. Milwaukee has committed 11. Andujar taking his time, a hit on the count, two strikes. Two gone. No one aboard for Milwaukee. They're looking for their first base runner. Ooh. Didn't clock that one, Tony. I was the same as you. I, the first thing I did was look down. That, without a doubt, was the hardest ball he threw. If nothing else, he is loose. One ball, two strikes. Again, foul back into the upper deck. You do not. Here's the comparison we were telling you, Brewers. Three down and run scored. They're up five and base hits. A little bit in batting average, extra base hits. The one you would have expected in pregame reports. The Brewers would be leading in. Ogilvy and Thomas have not really, they've got one extra base hit between them. Ozzie Smith. And Joaquin Andohar has retired the first nine men that he has faced. Absolutely perfect through two and a half. And the score at Bush Stadium in Game 7, the Cardinals and the Brewers.
no score. That shot from the Illinois side of the Mississippi through the yards into Bush Stadium. There are only four Goodyear blimps in the world, three in the United States, one in Rome, Italy. This one, the Goodyear Blimp America from Houston, Texas. Our pilot captain, Tim Townley Wren from Escanaba, Michigan. Our cameraman, George Simpson, technician, Harvey Shea. Down below, it's the bottom of the third, no score. Vukovic working to Ken Obrickfell. Cooper with a short hop and the easy play. One away. Tom Seaver. Dick, a couple of things that you and Tony have touched on about the psychology of the pitchers, how they will try to intimidate the hitters. Think about Joaquin Andahar, as you have pointed out, they cannot get the bat out in front in the hitting zone on his fastball. On the other side of the coin, Pete Vukovic warmed up in the bullpen with long sleeves on. He knows Andahar does not pitch with sleeves. Came in, took the sleeves off, and went out bare arm. Now it's 44 degrees. What's the chill factor? I mean, that's intimidation of the opposing pitcher. <laughs> Actually, they say the chill factor is 30 degrees and the temperature itself will be in the 30s before games end. That's really cut it fine when you have to intimidate a guy by the way you dress. Of course, Vukovic, we mentioned earlier, hardly the Bo Brummel of the baseball world. In fact, where you see some of the dressed for this seventh game of the World Series, some of the players are tailored so perfectly their uniform. And Pete, he kind of dresses as if uh, he wants to go to sleep right after the game. He doesn't have to put on his jammies. He's he's wearing them. Nice and loose. And for the first time, hitters ask for the baseball. A sinker that Vukovic threw to Hernandez. Two balls, no strikes to Hernandez. Infield hit, first trip. Back into the mezzanine. Two balls and a strike. Hernandez hitless in the first four games, but has seven hits since. To run homer last night. His first 15 outs he made, he hit a lot of ground balls. He's adjusted. Perhaps uh, with a weight shift or position of the hands. His father, former professional ball player, is hitting instructor. Three and one. He went around. No, says Dave Phillips on the appeal. That's the second walk allowed by Vukovic. You saw the graphic earlier. Vukovic leads the Brewers in walks. Slider. Show you what uh, the poor hitters cannot do, but the good hitters can. Right at the last, when they're going after a pitch, the hand strength to just stop that bat. Right fielder George Hendrick, he fouled to the catcher Simmons, his first at bat. One out, no score. They've been keeping the ball outside, and Hendrick, with that hole between first and second, has been hitting the right field and up the middle. So he's been going from center field over. There you see the gap. He can plug it. See if Herzog starts it. Look at it. Drives him off the plate, 2-0. and oh. And that's a good pitch by Vukovic because he's as much as telling him, hey, I know what you're trying to do, and I'm going to keep you from it. And, I, and he comes inside, and he hasn't seen that many pitches inside, and he just made a question mark. Joe, I'm course. not so, it's so sure it's that good a pitch when you go 2-0 and oh on the cleanup hitter. I don't think he wanted to make it a ball, Tony, but he got it inside is what I'm saying. He wasn't going to stay outside. He's letting him know that I know what you're trying to do. He was certainly trying for a strike. You never try to throw a ball unless you're way ahead of the hitter. That's a good example of a hitter looking outside. Almost got hit, hit himself with the pitch. It wasn't that far inside, but he was leaning out over the plate. Strike, and it's 2-1. and one. A little breaking ball sent the slider into the strike zone. That made that slider a little more effective, even though he went ball one on that second pitch. Now let's see if Chuck Hiller, the third base coach, relays, relays a sign to Hernandez. One out, two and one. To get him moving. Manager's delight, two balls and a strike. And Vukovic thinking along those lines sends Hernandez back. Continues to just lob the ball over, and the Cardinals know it. He's a member of this ball club. Base hit to left field. Hernandez will hold at second base. Hendrick with a fourth Cardinal hit, the first through the infield. Daryl Porter took a third strike, his first at bat. 
Does it surprise you at all that in such cold conditions and this is the final game that both managers any sign of trouble wouldn't get someone warmed up just in case as an example now Vukovic pitched out of a bases loaded jam in the last inning he has two men on one out in this inning high drive to right Charlie Moore is back to make the catch both runners tag here's the throw and Hendrick also advances into second as Hernandez goes to third as Porter flirted with a three run homer. Well, we're in the Cardinals ballpark, the big ballpark, where this is a home run in a lot of other places. You can see once you get it away from those foul lines, it does not carry. Another one of the reasons why the Cardinals were last in the major leagues in home runs. Two out, two on, and in scoring position for Dean Orange. And he has been the Cardinals' hottest hitter and also has been the most successful with men on base. 400 in scoring those runners. Two away, full wind up for Vukovic. All Orange has done in game four, he started, had a double his last at bat. Last night, his next start, a double, triple, double, and a line out to left, and then he had a single to open tonight. Out of play. And Vukovic has stranded four Cardinals to the first couple of innings. He's got a couple more looking at him in second and third. This is typical pattern for the 29-year-old from Clarion State of Pennsylvania. How long can you flirt with that, though? That's true. The Cardinal Ball Club, whose bats have been on the roll the last two ball games. Misses inside, two and one. First base is open. Rookie Willie McGee is on deck. And Vukovic knows all about the young center fielder. He took him deep twice in Milwaukee. Gantner to Cooper and Vukovic wiggles off the hook in the third. No runs, a hit, and two men left. Six stranded by the Cardinals in the first three innings. We go to the top of the fourth inning at Bush Stadium St. Louis. Paul Molitor, Robin Yount, and Cecil Cooper. The first three in the batting order, no score. No score after three as Anduhar and Vukovic have uh, shut out the opposition. Joe Garagiola, game seven, he remembers country slaughter. Game seven in 1960, how well you recall Bill Mazeroski. Who might the star be tonight? Your guess is as good as yeah, ours. There How's that be... for going out on the limb? <laughs> That's right, I like you when you take a strong stance. <laughs> Joaquin Anduhar has a three inning foot up on a starring role. He's been absolutely perfect, has not struck out a man. Only two men have reached the outfield. Molitor up now, he fly to right, and Simmons who fly to left. The rest, no text that, Gorman Thomas also hit the ball to center field. The other six ground outs. 0-2. Oh That's a tough slider that he throws also. He throws it about as hard, exactly the same motion as his fastball, and it is so difficult for the hitter to determine now when you finally do it's too late as hard as he throws it. Two strike delivery. Right side and a base hit. And a base stealer on board for the Brewers. Molitor's 10th hit of the series. The first by the Brewers tonight. The leadoff man is on. Brings up Robin Yount who is the leading hitter for the Brewers in the series. Yount took a pretty good uh, rather Molitor took a pretty good pitch. Looked like it was a way he kind of gave on the sidearm delivery. The pitching chart kept by Tom Seaver on Robin Yount. We'll examine that and get the comments of the Cincinnati Reds right-hander. Molitor has the green light. The only time you'll get a sign is when Harvey Keane does not want him to steal. So if he can read Anduar, he'll be off in a hurry. He won't have Yount have to get in the hole and take too many pitches. Pretty good fastball over to first baseman Keith Hernandez. And that is showing a lot of confidence in the gold glove first baseman. The lesser first baseman, Andujar, would not be able to do that. Throw that hard. Ron Hansen 
Number 18 helping Molitor with his lead. That's quite a contrast too between the two pitchers as far as the base runners. Vukovic uh, kind of timid throwing over there, just letting them know with that lob and Andahar, he's firing bullets. Andahar to hold plate. Does not get rid of the ball too quickly though. Off the fist, Obergfell gets one there, but not the double play. Yown safe on the fielder's choice. A little bit surprised that Robin didn't let Paulie have a little more time. Paul Molitor. Tough hop for Obergfell playing in. Get a chance to see Young speed once again with the third base moment with foul play. Even with a the bag, they still couldn't double him up. So Young is 0 for 6 since his home run. His last at bat, game five in Milwaukee. Cecil Cooper grounded to third, his first at bat. Hernandez at first base, uh, making a good scoop play on the throw from Obergfell. No score in the fourth. Andohar for the first time in the game, working from a stretch position. I think it's interesting too, Dick and Joe, that the Brewer hitters don't get a chance to see in the American League a lot of pitchers like Andujar. The difference in the two leagues: Vukovic, a breaking ball pitcher; Andujar, a fastball pitcher. Like a half a dozen, maybe, who throw this hard in the American League. Base hit to right field. Yount's going to third. Hendricks throw. He got him. Just an outstanding play by George Hendricks. Underrated. Unspoken. Charges the ball. Almost grabbed it by four seams. Ozzy Smith with the decoy. I'm surprised they didn't argue a little bit more. I don't know if the third baseman Oberfeld blocked him off. He just crushed him right in the side of the head with his right knee. Kept him off the bag when the ball came across Robin's body. Outstanding play by Hendrick. And the play was made because Young going from first to second had to wait to make sure the ball didn't hit him. That lost step was the difference between out and safe at third base. Hendrick with a perfect throw. So two out and Ted Simmons the better. He flied to left his first time up. A couple of home runs in the series both solo shots and both of them here. Popped up. Darrell Porter. And the inning is over. No runs two hits one left as Robin Young trying to go from first to third on a single by Cooper is gunned down by George Hendrick. That's the biggest play thus far in this game seven. And we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Cardinals and the Brewers no score. Watch Robin Young as he rounds second base. Here's where he makes a big loop, much like as if he was going to score. You think going into the bag, he would have been straighter. And Joe, another thing, there is one time where sliding head first actually hurt him. Had he gone in feet first, he probably would have upended over Fallon, maybe just slid right through him. And no matter which way, Hendricks made an outstanding play. And it's hard it and made an accurate throw. It's a good example of Henrik always saying, don't judge me by the way I look. Judge me by the job I do. And he does the job. Big play as Milwaukee denied in the top of the fourth. Willie McGee leads off the last half of the fourth inning. He flied to left center field his first time up. George Hendrick. The silent man for the Cardinals with the press, but certainly not in the clubhouse where he's perhaps the most popular player on this ball club. McGee has a base hit. And for the fourth inning, Bukovic will be pitching with a runner aboard and for the first time with the leadoff man on. And it's the first time that the Cardinals have had a base stealer as the lead runner. Orge out in front, clogging it up a little bit. Tommy Herb, good bunt man, good hit and run man. And he may be up there to take, give Willie McGee a chance to steal. Molitor is in tight. We're going to see some action because they'll test Vukovic and Porter, and if they pick the right pitch with the change of speed, there's no way they'll get McGee. 
Well, hers there to serve the kind of job that Jim Gilliam did for Maury Wills, Sizemore did for Brock. Give him a chance to run. Take a pitch if you have to. Let Willie go. Stole successfully 17 out of his last 21 attempts. Oh, one. Well, that's not a bad play by her. He may not be sacrificing. He may just be taking, but by squaring around, he brings the infield in. And if McGee indeed is stealing, he gives a little something for everyone to look at. Except the catcher, when you square around like that, it's tough to see the base runner, and it blocks your vision if the bat is high enough. McGee bluff going, and it's 2-0. You know, there's really no sense sacrificing with a McGee there unless it's late in, the late in the ball game because he can steal second base for you without giving up an out by the sacrifice. So Hera's is there to protect. And did you see that infield, the way it really jumped around there? Gantner he really was breaks covering. up the infield. Gantner was the man who was covering, but everybody moved. No one out. McGee at first base with his lead. Hit to right field. Moore has to play it on a hop. McGee on to third. Well, Dee Fondi of the Brewers and Nelson Burberry, the advanced scouts, said that the Cardinals run and hit. They don't take the casual lead off and then expect the guy to hit behind him. They try and steal the base on the McGee. That time wasn't too sure because he didn't have a good job. Heller is trying to say, come on over. It's bouncing in front. McGee finally senses it and comes over. And had more caught the ball, McGee was too far gone. That would have been a double play, but it is a base hit. First and third, and Milwaukee's bullpen busy for the first time. Well, Harvey Keene thus far in this World Series, Dick, has managed like he did 162 ball games. There's that Vukovic stand where they scored run. Haas and Sutton, he's got somebody up early this game. Ozzie Smith, an infield hit his first time up as he chopped one over the mound. And one of the things the Milwaukee defense has to look for here is a possible squeeze bunt that could get a run home and move the other man to second base to place him in scoring position. Smith handles the bat well. And Herc and Steele. Pops it up into the right side. Gantner calling. Oh, that's what Smith didn't want to do with his speed to get the ball in the air. And there's one out. So now a double play could bail Vukovic out of the inning. Bob McClure, left-hander with a couple of saves in this series. And Moose Haas, the starting pitcher for the Brewers over the weekend, the right-hander tuning up. And almost every Cardinal that's set up by Whitey Herzog hits into double plays very infrequently. Makes it that much tougher on the defense. And if they're a little more shallow, artificial surface, some of those balls scoot on through. We've had a couple meetings. Robin Young having a meeting now. He just wants to know what Vukovic and Simmons were talking about, the possibility of double steal. And of course, make sure that Vukovic knows who's covering on the double play, but there's only one thing in his mind that's strike on. And also, what pitch he's going to try and get Lonnie Smith to hit. Should Yount play him up the middle or in the hole? Is he going to sink the ball down and in, ride the ball away? ball to right first two at bats change up had him out in front no run six hits for the Cardinals in the first three and a third no runs two hits from Milwaukee
pulls so many rabbits out of the hat as Vukovic is down. Look at where Molitor is playing, a tribute to the speed of Smith in case he should drop a punt. As soon as he does that, the ball gets fired, no chance for a double play. Had he been able to play two strides deeper, he catches that ball and you've got an around the horn double play starting. You know, Whitey Herzog has constructed his team to play on the artificial surface, and we've seen a lot of carpet hits. There was another in this game tonight. Oberkfell takes a strike. He has struck out and grounded to first. As Harvey has said all year, it's which side do the lucky inches fall? That's what determines the winner. 1 0 St. Louis in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two on and only one out. Just to drop in a note as to what the early lead has meant this year to Joaquin Andohar. When the Cardinals have scored first for Andohar, he is 15 and 1. And they've given him the early lead tonight. Trying to get more. Cooper gets one there, and that's all that the Brewers can manage. So two out with runners at first and third as Oberkfell is safe on the fielder's choice. So a runner at first, a runner at third. And with two down, Steve Hernandez coming up with the Cardinals leading one to nothing. Hernandez, an infield single, and a walk. So the Cardinals have seven hits, two walks, and one run. Well, to me, they have two hits because yeah, they right. two line drives and they've got five bounces on the concrete. Hernandez hitting over 320 with runners in scoring position. And Vukovic ready, delivers, and the pitch high and inside. Ball one, one and all. Oh. Here in the inning, McGee, single to center. Her, single to right. Ozzie Smith popped up. Smith, single to the hole at short, scoring McGee. Overfell is hit into a fourth play, sending her to third. And the 1 0 pitch on the way. Hernandez looks in that pine outside. Ball two. Tommy Her down the line from third. Then Overfell standing right at the bag at first. 2 0 to Hernandez. The outfield fanned out straight away. Ogilvy very deep in left field for a left hand hitter up there. The 2 0 pitch is one on and miss. 2 and 1. He is as deep in left field for Hernandez as he would play George Hendricks. Two and one. Again, Vukovic out of his set. Looks at the running. And the 2 1 pitch to Keith is high. Ball three. I would say you could say that Benji could scrape a little paint off his back. I don't know what he's doing out there. I can't believe he's playing that deep the opposite field. Dan Ogilvy is somewhere near Hannibal, Missouri. Well, they couldn't hit the ball over his head unless he saw the ball for ice. Three and one, the count of Hernandez. Vukovic delivers, one on and miss, three and two. And I'll say one thing, what he's the battler. He's not going to throw strikes when he's behind. If you chase him, you're going to chase bad stuff. Cecil Cooper gives her one wrist over the other sign to Vukovic. I'm coming off the bag at first. So three and two, Overfell will be going. Tommy Hurd down the line from third, and Vukovic ready, but Hernandez isn't. On deck, George Hendricks. Moose Haas and left-handed Bob McClure in the Milwaukee bullpen. Vukovic fighting for his life in this game, and the three-two pitch. Pete delivers, swung on and missed. Took a little off it, and Hernandez strikes out. What a pitch. Well, he stripped their pillows for three innings out then. One run, three hits. Eight men now left on by the Cardinals. At the end of four, Cardinals won. Milwaukee nothing. Here action just moments ago at Caesars. That's Harvey Keene's bar. Just a couple of Gorman Thomas home runs away from County Stadium. Little uh, tension there as well. A one nothing St. Louis lead as the Cardinals have given Joaquin Andujar a run to lean on. And again, that statistic, Andujar, who was 15 and 10 on the year, was 15 and one when the Cardinals scored first. He'll be facing Oglavy, Thomas, and Howell in the fifth inning. 
Oglavy. Fairly quiet series. Only five hits and no RBIs. That mark there, of course, including the playoff American League playoff series as well. And the explosion from these Brewers bats that people have talked about and we've seen so much of. Look out. That one's hit well. Deep to right. If it's fair, it's gone, and we have a tie game. Live in Milwaukee, you can bet that brought them right out of their seats as Ben Oglevy has his first home run of the series, and we have a new game at one. As expected here in St. Louis, it's like they sprayed the ballpark with ether. And in Milwaukee, they're dancing in the streets, and that's the way it should be. The seventh game of the World Series, and these two clubs still battling. We've got a tie. What a contrast. There's Milwaukee. And what's, what has been fun about this series, these are two highly partisan cities. You can get New York and Los Angeles, and you'll get some people rooting for the other side no matter what the other side is, but not in these two cities. You don't dare yell cheers for Milwaukee in this town, nor do you want to wear a red hat in Milwaukee. People here were sitting like they were handcuffed. 1-1 one, one is Andujar. Faces Gorman Thomas, and he hits it high. Just missed it. It's deep to left. Smith. Oh, that wind playing tricks with it. That had some hearts in some throats here at Bush Stadium. They haven't had a whole lot of good swings at Joaquin Andujar. They've been behind him, but they seem to be catching up. This pitch is a slider that is about belt high inside. Did not get down like Andujar usually likes to throw it. And he gets that downward action along with the inward action. That one just stayed right there, and he really hit it hard. The last two balls, very few that have been pulled. Howell to Obergfell. Good play. Stayed with it. Two out. Now Milwaukee, as you said in the pregame show, has pushed themselves to the brink all season long when they lost fingers. Pitching staff got tired. Had to go out and get Sutton to really clinch it for him. And as you heard, Harvey Keen, Roland Fingers, will not pitch tonight. So Fingers, in essence, was a decoy through the playoff series and the World Series. Charlie Moore grounded a second, his only time up. I think in all honesty, and Harry Dalton said that the GM and Keene, if they had known this, they certainly would have kept Easterly, left-hander, to come in. But they did not make him eligible. One strike to Moore. Her has to hurry. Gets him. And the inning is over. But Ben Oglevy's long home run to right has tied the game. And at the halfway mark in this one, four and a half innings in the book. The Milwaukee Brewers won. The St. Louis Cardinals won. The incredible shot of downtown St. Louis and Bush Stadium from the Goodyear Blimp America. It took 20 hours to get from Milwaukee to St. Louis at 17 miles an hour. Tom Seaver has kept his pitching eye on Pete Vukovic. Dick, the one thing that Tony has been talking about is uh, Pete Vukovic will get behind and pitch from behind. He's faced 21 hitters and already on 2-0 and and 3-1 and counts. He's been there eight times. Those are when the hitters really make their living. And one reason, Tony, he can do that, as you pointed out, he can change speeds and throw. George Hendrick to Robin Yount. And there's one away. Go ahead, Tom. He'll go to the 2-0 and or 3-1 and one count, and he has enough confidence Number in his 13, other pitches other than his fastball to throw his change up, to throw his curveball, to throw his slider. So even if he does get behind the hitter, he has that confidence to go ahead. He knows even the 3-2, and 3-3. Well, that's the problem. If somebody does sit on it, it's a, one of the easiest pitches to hit, especially if you get a change up that does not move. The hitter can really coil on it. You know, and it's like a spring uncoiling, and boy, it's a... Uh, it's a dangerous pitch. That's why you got to use it sparingly. Foul by Porter. He's not short changed on any of his swings. Two balls, two strikes. Vukovic changeup is so good, however, he throws two different kinds that he has at times thrown an entire ball game and thrown 40 or 50. That's how good it is. 
Sometimes close to half his pitches in a nine inning games could be change ups. Not always. 2 2, another change, and it's outside. 3 and 2. One out. No one on. Bottom of the fifth. We're tied at one in this final game of the 1982 baseball year. And another change rolled into the Cardinal dugout. He changes not only off his fastball, off his slider, and he slows down his curveball. When he comes over the top with that downer, he'll take something off the time the left-handed hitters. Vukovic in constant trouble since coming out to work the first inning, but in a 1-1 tie. Pops up Porter on the left side. Yount calling. Squeezes the second out. What about this Sunday rematch of that wild fight scene on Sports World last summer that was halted because of low blows. Mark Frazee, Dwight Tiger Walker go at, at it. And of course, Stadium Supercross following NFL 82. That's all beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern time. An NBC Sports special this Sunday. So be with us. Dane Orge, an infield hit and two at-bats. Out of play, off to the left. You know, here's a guy, Dane Orge, who this spring training was concerned about making the Cardinals 25-man roster to go north. And he's becoming somewhat of a hitting star in this World Series to show you how, as you said, eight months difference in time can change. Hitting 500, eight for 16. This could be another one. Bag. Hits the bag and goes into center field. Well, that's a surveyor's hit for Dane Orge and his ninth hit of the series. Why do things like this only happen to good hitters? The guy is struggling around, around 200. Or pop right into the glove of how to somebody else. Good sinker ball by Vukovic. I'll tell you, Vukovic could be talking to himself because of the uh, to himself uh, because of the infield hits and plays like that. They have not really scorched him, but what counts is the score, and it's 1-1. One, one. Well, the first three base hits off him never got out of the infield. The other one just barely sneaked through. Fourth one. Well, Orge did not start in two of the seven games of this series and still has nine hits. Doesn't start against left-handed pitching. Oh, what a job he's done against the right-hander. Did not start against Caldwell, the two games that the left-hander of Milwaukee pitched. McGee up, two out, trying to break the 1-1 one -one tie. Low. That was a record tying hit for a designated hitter, Orge. Reggie Jackson and Hal McRae with nine hits as a DH. Share the record, and Orge joins some fast company. Hit to left center. Thomas got a terrific break on the ball and then made it look easy. And that's it for St. Louis in the fifth. No runs, a hit. They leave another. That's nine stranded through five. We go to the sixth inning at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. The seventh game of the World Series is tied at one. The umpires this year, chosen by Merritt, work in the World Series, and you're looking at Bill Haller, who is a senior umpire in the American League, and he is umpiring what he says will be his last game. 47-year-old Haller completing his 20th year as an umpire, joined the league for the 1963 season, fourth World Series, and he umpires in, I guess, what was typical, Tony, in the clubhouse, the umpire's dressing room, as we look at the whole list, presented Bill Haller with a beautifully engraved clock. The only people there were the other umpires. I think he might continue on in a supervisory capacity for Dick Butler, and the umpiring crew out of the American League. Be a good choice. He's been one of the best for a long time. True. Drilled into right center field. That could go all the way to the wall and does. Gantner. Looking at a possible triple, but settles for two. And the Brewers had the leadoff man on to open the sixth inning as Gantner, who hit Andahar two for two, the first time they met, as a double in the sixth. Give you an idea of the difference in pitches made. Andahar, that was his 50th pitch. Vukovic has already thrown 70, 20 more. And the extra base hits on the part of some of these Brewers coming from the unlikely spots. Gantner's fourth double of this series. Charlie Moore has three. 
The out is three. Of course, he gets extra base hits all year long. Molitor, whose single was through the right side, and that's where he'll be trying to aim one now to advance that runner. He may push a bunt, too. He does that a lot in this situation. Good call. That's what he had indicated. Takes the strike on the outside corner. Got to be careful of with Hernandez fielding at first base the way he charges and throwing from the left side. He can come up with that ball. If you don't get a good jump off second base, he can gun you out because Obergefell was not even charging. Doug Bear is going to start throwing in the bullpen for St. Louis, the first activity we've had in the Cardinal pen. Good looking bunt. Uh -huh. Andohar. He's safe. The raw ball gets away. The run scores. Molitor will hold at second base. The Cardinals try to play, having confidence that Andujar would be able to cover half of the diamond from the pitcher's rubber to the third baseline, and that Hernandez, the great fielder, would cover it from the first baseline to the pitcher's mound. So they had just two charging. Andujar, that is a ball that Obuk fell to not come in on, on time. Andujar steals it away from off balance, and there it goes. E1. Yeah, Look at how far he is. Obrick foul trying to hold third. Glances off the hip for the back. Goes down to the bullpen. It's ruled an infield hit for Molitor, and then advancing each man a base on Andujar's throwing air. And the Milwaukee Brewers lead for the first time in game seven, two to one. No one out and a runner at second as Molitor just exchanges places with Gantner. And Robin Yount, the batter. High chopper, that'll get the job done. No one covering first base and Yount is safe. Robin Yount beats it out. Show the kind of player that Yount is, a man who had so many total bases, not trying for a base hit. Look at how he just hits inside out, chops the ball into the ground, giving himself up. And Andujar, who had had to roll him to the third baseline, just froze and didn't get over to cover. He might have been still thinking about that throwing error, and that's his play. Did not break at all toward first base. And everything going right for the Brewers here in the top of the sixth. They lead two to one and have runners at first and third, and no one out. Can't help it once again, those lucky inches, the way they fall. One way or the other it determines it. And for the first time, we saw Andahar thinking about that shot that Simmons hit off his leg. Can he move as we look at the bullpen? Cott is the left-hander, Bear is the right-hander. And Andahar moved to first base to cover well earlier in the game, and a little mental lapse that time that could really hurt him. Here's Molitor when he butted down and Andujar threw off balance. Andujar had an awful lot on this throw to show you the strength of his arm when he was falling away from the first base bag that went to the bullpen. Brewers, chance for a big inning with nobody out. Cecil Cooper, one for two off Andujar. He out at first, Molitor at third, two good base runners, and Molitor with much better than average speed. Outfield deep straight away. Two to one, Milwaukee, top of the sixth. Going. Yount goes, hit to deep left. Back goes Smith. Molitor tagging. He'll score. Yount played it halfway, now returns to first base. It's three to one, Brewers. So Harvey King trying to stay out of a double play, create a hole because Cooper can hit the ball so well the opposite way. He had Ozzy Smith covering from the shortstop spot, Dick. He got it in the air. He was trying to shoot it through the shortstop hole. Here's Cooper with the out leaving. The first base bag really carried much more deeply than I thought it would. And when he sees it, will score the run on the sacrifice fly. What you saw. Interesting shot. Remember in the playoff series, he was making a different gesture. Get down, get down on that line drive single that was the game winning hit against the Angels in game five. Ted Simmons with one out, Yount at first. Three to one, Brewers. Out of play. Just an observation, Dick, about this Milwaukee club. Tony, I think they, they think play. Molitor was thinking any way to get him over. Cooper, any way to get him in instead of uh, Yount, the same way. Instead of thinking base hit or what I'm thinking to play, what do I need now? Sacrifice fly, but whatever. 
One ball, one strike. Joe, I don't think there's any question that for a team that is considered to be a team of sluggers and big inning ball club, that they are very fundamentally sound. Defensively, they've played shabbily at times, but they've also played brilliantly, and they have shown you in this inning how to move base runners. Ooh, almost threw that away as Yao to head first time. Andu after about four innings looked almost untouchable the way they were swinging late, but they seem to have caught up to his fastball now. Slider makes it one and two. Two runs are in to break the tie in the Milwaukee sixth inning. Gantner led it off with a double through the gap in right center. Molitor safe on a bunt single and moved to second as Gantner scored on Anduhar's throwing air to make it 2-1. Sacrifice fly by Cooper. Got the other run in. Hernandez won there and not in time at first base. Simmons not a good runner. Just does outleg the relay. We're seeing two first basemen. I can think of Eddie Murray of the Baltimore Orioles who really excel at getting the lead runner. Watch him. He's not even thinking stepping on first. He wants to get the lead man, get the speedy man off the base, and the acrobat, Ozzie Smith, gets the throw off. You're also seeing two aggressive plays. I mean, neither one satisfied with just the easy way of Hernandez tagging first base or Ozzie Smith holding the ball. He threw a submarine underhand and almost made the play. Whitey right, Herzog checking Ben Oglevy, who tied the game with his solo homer in the fifth inning. And up now with two outs, Simmons at first. Up the middle. Great stop by her, and he gets the out. Well, the rally stoppers for both teams, but primarily for the Cardinals, Ozzie Smith and her do it again. But the Brewers get two in the sixth and lead it three to one. Before we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Current temperature 43 degrees. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning of the final game of this 82 World Series. The Brewers have broken the tie with two in the top half of the inning. Burr. Running foul, Dick Enver, Joe Garagirola, Tony Kubek, and Tom Seaver. We're in the last of the six. The Cardinals jumped in front in the fourth inning with a runoff starter, Pete Vukovic, who's been in trouble in most every inning. Singles by McGee and Her, and an infield hit by Lonnie Smith scored the Cardinal run. He's ben Oglevy's homer tied it in the fifth, and then two runs in the sixth inning to go ahead 3-1. He was hollering, watch the line, watch the line. One and one. If you're a batter, Tony, you have to look for an off-speed pitch if he hollers that, but then you can't really believe that fella, can you? <laughs> yeah. Her, a walk and a hit. Two and one, the count. Well, he started off ahead very quickly. He's now thrown two in a row. The Cardinals have stranded nine base runners. Vukovic pitching like he has over the last couple of years, the best record in the American League. Get behind and somehow get him out. Two and one. On the corner with another change. Two and two. And a reminder, Vukovic has a whole pitching staff support, including two-game winner in this series, Mike Caldwell, if Harvey Keane should elect to use him in relief. He's ready. Nub to the left side. Molitor to Cooper. One away. Number one, shortstop, Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith, an infield hit in two trips. Molitor way up close now at third base. Cooper, not even with a bag, looking for a bunt. Ozzie Smith may, will, may try and slap the ball by him, something that Chuck Hiller, the third base coach, has really worked on with him. Chopped down on the turf. Coming off the San Diego dirt and grass. One and one. 
Molitor almost giving it that Pete Rose come on in and challenge him and force him to hit that way. There it is. And it's a base hit to left. Ogilvy cutting it off at the line, and Smith will hold with a long single. Little piece of play set. He was trying to slap the ball that way. He gets the line drive. They certainly had a position perfectly, didn't they, Dick? Because Ogilvy right near the line prevents the double. Nine hits for the Cardinals, all singles. He's aiming that way to get it by Molitor. Ogilvy guarding the line, prevents it from becoming a double, and Bob McClure begins to throw in the bullpen along with Moose Haas. Tying runners at the plate, Lonnie Smith. Ripped there! So the Smith brothers, Ozzie and Lonnie, are in scoring position. now for St. Louis. That's twice in this ball game that Lonnie Smith with his speed Molitor having to come in. He chopped one to the left of Molitor the last time up this time. He hits it harder but still gets by to the right. Now Vukovic is in trouble once again. I admire a guy like Vukovic who keeps getting in trouble and is able to this point to be able to pitch out of it somehow. One of those guys looks around sees a couple of men on base and turns to the plate and says I got you right where I want you. <laughs> yeah. How long? I tell you, it's been the old story. He really, it's almost like he looks around and figures he's pitching with two infields. And now look at him to show his coolness. He's just changing shoes. He has always got something going. He's one of the pitchers who wears two different shoes from two different companies. He may have the same company shoes on this time. But all these little psychological ploys to just kind of stop the action of the game and make himself the center of attention. Fifth, he, look at him. He is something. <laughs> Here comes Harvey Keene, but here's a guy, 53,000 people in the ballpark, millions watching, and he comes up with a bad shoemaker. <laughs> Got dirt in both shoes. How do you do that? Looking for his lucky quarter. <laughs> Harvey Keene coming out to talk with Vukovic. We may see a pitching change. He will come up with something almost every game you see him pitch, Pete Vukovic. Anything for the little bit of an edge. Left-handed hitter Oberkfell is the man up with Ozzy at third, the tying run Lonnie at second, and McClure will come in to pitch to Oberkfell. Hernandez do next another left-handed hitter. So the southpaw is the choice. A break in the action. Game seven in St. Louis. The Brewers lead by two. The Cardinals threatening the tie. Keen tennis batting for Oberkfell and McClure's first pitch is ball one. Tennis, 0 for 6 in the series, and the most valuable player back in 1972 when he hit four home runs for Oakland in their victory over the Cincinnati Reds. The infield is playing back. They'll give up a run for an out. Three to one. The Brewers lead. One out. Runners at second and third. McClure against tennis. Fifth game of this series. Lost game two. His run being the one when uh, the man who relieved him walked in the winning run, Ladd. And he has two saves in the game, saving games four and five. In that ball game, McClure lost his former high school teammate, Hernandez, with a walk. That led to trouble. Tennis, 2 0. Oh. Chance to tie it with one swing. Takes a curveball strike, two and one. Single would tie it with Lonnie at third and Ozzy at second. Outfield deep with respect to tennis. Ball three. 
And Herzog can make a move like this. There's Hernandez on deck. And taking Oberkfell has had a good series out because he's got Ramsey, who's played so well defensively. And Ramsey, if Tennis gets on, may go into pinch run. First base open. Three balls and a strike. And he misses inside. The bases are loaded. Tennis and undoubtedly stay in the game, take over defensively at third base. Hernandez, an infield hit, a walk and a strikeout facing Vukovic. Ramsey now carrying the potential go ahead run. One out, force at every base, the Brewer infield looking for the double play. And Hernandez. With six hits in the last three games, trying to get St. Louis even. Ball one. Mike Caldwell is starting to warm up. In the Milwaukee bullpen, joining Moose Haas, those two, two starting pitchers. Haas, who started game four. Caldwell, who has two starts and two wins in this World Series, getting ready. 1 0. Oh. Big curveball. 1 and 1. on his birthday. All the candles are lit for him. Base is full. Lonnie Smith. Ozzy at third. Lonnie at second. Ramsey at first. The pinch runner. One out. Outside. It's two and one. pitch two balls and a strike McClure wants to throw a strike and you know Hernandez is ready to swing and the bases are full
the sixth inning. And Hendrick up. Howell, a left-hander, Boos has the right-hander. Harvey has not made the move to go to his right-hander to get Hendrick, the right-handed hitter. And Porter, a left-hander up next. Hendrick, one for three. The leading RBI home run man the last three years for St. Louis. Foul tip. Ramsey, tiebreaker at third. Hernandez with a two-run single at first. Middle of the dime in the Brewer infield looking for a double play. And if they get the third or first, if they don't feel they can get the double play, they'll come home and get Ramsey. You surprised that uh, Harvey Keene has now, not gone to a right-hander? Yes, somewhat. Lays at the plate. Foul ball. Foul ball. No play. So that's a break for the Cardinals because Ramsey was surely out. Although McClure got him a big double play. One game with... McGee at the bat from the right side. A double play turned by Gantner. Watch this play at the plate when Ramsey comes in head first, which is a big mistake because he's going up against Simmons and there's no way he's going to get to the plate and he's going to get a shin guard sandwich in the process. That's very dangerous. Catchers love to see those guys come in head first. Hi there. Would you say that Simmons had the plate blocked adequately? <laughs> Not a chance. Couldn't get in there unless he had a subpoena. It was a foul ball, and Simmons is arguing about it with Lee Wire. They need the sacrifice fly to break the tie of these cards. McClure with a good sinker. He also has a, a very good hard slider. They'd like to throw down it in for a strikeout in this situation. See what Simmons calls. Going away. One and two. That may be the pitch to set up the slider down and in. He was using that to set up his pitch of decision. Uh, whether it's this one or the 2 2, you would think it'd be here. Foul. Nasty. Milwaukee dugout. It's McClure's game now. We can close the book on Vukovic. He went five and a third innings, allowing three runs and ten hits. McClure came in at walk tennis. Run four by Ramsey. Ramsey's now at third and Hernandez at first. One and two. All that. You know, Dick Hendrick is one of the only cleanup hitters that I know, a guy who drove in 104 runs this year, who can adjust when he gets behind in the count, alter his swing, and just peck away the opposite way. And he spreads out, doesn't stride much, and seems to try and hit that ball right up the middle. Most clean up hitters are there for one thing to take the big cut. Infield back. Line in the right field. Ramsey scores. It's four to three, St. Louis. so far tonight a great throw from right field to take the Brewers out of a first and third situation when he gunned out Robin Young at third and now base hit when he's behind the count to drive home the tie-breaking run still only one out Tom Saber Nick one thing that comes into play now obviously we get this close is Bruce Suter in the bullpen when will Whitey use him Whitey Prior to the game, said he would not bring him in before the seventh inning, but now Cardinals go up by a run, still only one out of the inning. And a healthy Bruce Suter, the guy that has been probably the most effective, most important player on this entire team, the Cardinal team, rested and ready in the bullpen. Darrell Porter, 0 for 3 tonight. David Green is in the on-deck circle. Dane Orge, the designated hitter. And with a left-hander out there, Green would hit against 
McClure, but this may be McClure's last man. McClure has given up a walk to tennis and singles by Hernandez and Hendrick. Breaking ball in there. One and one. Hernandez at second with a two run single. Hendrick at first with an RBI single that has given St. Louis a 4 3 lead. Not just because it's game seven, but this has been the most dramatic of the seven series games between these two clubs. One of the questions that stands up in the postgame conference to Harvey is, did you consider going to right-hander to get Hendrick and then coming in with a left-hander Caldwell? Ball three, three and one. Caldwell and Haas are both ready if needed as Harvey Keene checking his batting list and available players, not only his own, but those of Whitey Herzog's. Last of the six, the Cardinals have scored three to move ahead four to three. Only one up. The count is now full. over Bush Stadium shot from the blimp the geometry of baseball two on one out three and two the count the Cardinals to the delight of this Bush Stadium crowd have regained the lead same kind of confidence that Whitey Herzog showed in Porter earlier in this series when he started Hendricks the one ball two strikeouts he knows Porter's been swinging a pretty good bat though MVP in the National League Championship Series we got a guy going who's hot we can start some runners the curveball that McClure has been able to get it's a, it's a daring play on Whitey's part because he, he could run himself out a strikeout throw him out but he got here by running him and he's going to live and die by that strategy Runners did not go, and Jan wasn't covering, and McClure just slipped the ball off the shortstop. He didn't have to throw it at all. Going to second base that way, he could have just held it. Robin Yao starts breaking over. That ball's rolling out in the outfield. First, not in time. The inning is still alive. Hendrick erased on the 4 6 play at second. Hernandez moving on to third. Not very hit very hard, and Porter from the left side surprisingly had an excellent jump out of the batter's box. For designated hitter Dane Orr, number 22, David. Here comes Harvey Keene. As soon as David Green was introduced as the pinch hitter for Dane Orge, Keene made his move up the steps and undoubtedly going to bring in Moose Haas, the right-hander, to pitch to the right-handed hitting Green. Runners at first and third, two out in this sixth inning with one out. Ozzie Smith single to left. Lonnie Smith double down the left field line. Exit Vukovic, enter McClure. A walk to the pinch hitter tennis, then a two run single by Hernandez to tie it. Hendrick giving them the lead, St. Louis the lead with his single. And now Moose Haas in relief. We break for this action. 
Moose Haas, the starter in game four for Milwaukee, did not figure in the decision. The second relief pitcher used by Keene here in the sixth inning. Tom Siever? Dick, as I go back over the pitching chart and you look at what might be the turning point, the key factor in the inning so far for the Cardinals, Keith Hernandez up against the left hander McClure. First, second pitcher that Hernandez saw was a curveball that Keith jumped back from. It was going to be a very tough pitch for him to hit. But then McClure went to three and one with the bases loaded. And you could go to everybody in this ballpark and know that a fastball was coming. And Keith, of course, you give him an advantage, give that type of hitter that advantage where he has a shot at a three and one count, especially with the bases loaded, and can sit on a fastball. He's going to drive the ball hard somewhere. Of course, he drove it up the middle and drove in two runs. So now it's Haas trying to get the final out in what is already a three run Cardinal inning. And Dick, Whitey Herzog has made moves using more and more players, and you can have that luxury of making those moves. He has Brummer and Gonzalez left if you've got a suitor in the bullpen. Hernandez at third, Porter at first, two out. Four to three, St. Louis leads Milwaukee, bottom of the sixth inning. Braun hitting for Green, who was hitting for Orge. Orge went two for three. Oh, what a series for him, eight for nine for 17, over 500. Braun has appeared only once, and it was Braun that earned the bases loaded walk that proved to be the winning run in game two, the 5-4 Cardinal win. One and one. Haas, the man who pitched so brilliantly against the California Angels, went into the sixth inning pitching no hit baseball, the championship series. Good fastball, tough slider when he's on the top, and a split fingered forkball like suitor. Strike, and it's one and two. Peter Ladd has joined Mike Caldwell in the Milwaukee bullpen. starter with two series wins. Milwaukee bench has just moved the second baseman Gantner closer towards the line trying to protect that hole. One ball two strikes. Back Porter on first base the left hander up the chances of Porter stealing are not very good. I'm surprised that Cecil Cooper isn't playing a little bit behind him with two outs. Take a little bit more of that gap away. Whitey Herzog told us, as you heard at the start of our telecast, that he would bring in Bruce Suter no sooner than the seventh inning. Well, the seventh inning is coming up. No activity in the Cardinal bullpen. Broken bat. Gantner takes care of Braun. The inning over. But St. Louis cheers a three run sixth. Three runs on four hits. Two more left. And after six, it's the Cardinals four, the Brewers three. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. After six, the Cardinals four runs and 12 hits, three runs, six hits for Milwaukee. Whitey Herzog has his ace, Bruce Suter, nearby. See him right there behind the skipper of the Cardinals. Suter in the St. Louis dugout, undoubtedly keeping as warm as he can. Doesn't want to sit down on the bench in the right field corner. You know, Dick, uh, Whitey Herzog, there's Ramsey, the new third baseman who went into pinch run. Whitey Herzog doesn't like to use Suter for three complete innings. He said he's kept statistics. And he feels that Suter can come in an inning, finish a team off, and get out of trouble, go the next inning and do well. He usually finds that the third inning is the one where they start catching up to Suter. Suter has had some knee problems, has not run all year. He injured his knee in the spring, so he's not quite as durable this year as he has been in the past. It shows in the strikeouts to inning pitch ratio, which has gone down this year, starting at the end of last year. And Joe, Joaquin Andujar taking a few extra warm-up pitches before going to work here in the seventh inning. It's been a long inning. 
I might add that the Cardinals are taking elaborate security precautions to ensure safety for all at tonight's game. And the official statement, our only objective is the safety of all concerns, said Cardinals general manager Joe McDonald. We do not waste to dampen the enthusiasm of the fans, but everyone's safety comes first. And I'll tell you something, those little animals will make sure that your safety comes first if they're on your side. And it certainly worked in Philadelphia. Gorman Thomas, Andujar back in the lead, four to three. Thomas has flied out twice. It's been a long inning for Andujar, and I just wonder if that'll have an effect. Why do you be watching that since he's got his big eraser suitor sitting next to him? Twice as many hits for St. Louis, 12 to six, but only one more run as the Cardinals have left 11 men on base in six innings. Milwaukee just two, and you might recall in game five when the Cardinals threw a bunch of hits on the board, they stranded 12 in that game. Sooner, the big guy's going down. You heard the crowd react with the call Sooner. 2-0 to Thomas. Oh, did he have a cut. On to our the home run by Ogilvy leading off the fifth, and then it was a relatively easy inning, a couple of ground outs, but he ran into a lot of trouble in the sixth inning. Two-time All-Star performer with the Houston Astros against Gorman Thomas. Tied Reggie Jackson for the home run championship of the American League with 39 this year. Two and two. Two ball, one strike, breaking ball. That surprised Gorman Thomas. He was looking for smoke all the way. Here's a man that has not lost in his last 12 starts, 8 and 0. Two balls, two strikes. Outside as he crossfired him with a breaking ball. On deck is Roy Howell with Charlie Moore in the hole. Big pitch for Andujar, three and two. Foul tip. Thomas just getting a piece of that breaking ball. Andujar with a much quicker pace over the first three innings. And over the last couple, he has slowed down just a little bit. Show you his motion on the three and two pitch. Two and one, he went breaking ball. He went breaking ball three and two. He wanted that pitch. It was fouled off. You can see the expression on his face. He that kind was of dropped that arm at his side. I don't think his arm is bothering him, but he looked a little bit uncomfortable after he released that ball. Gets him. Might have been the fourth ball. Strike out the ball game. Boy, he threw breaking pitches when he was behind, three and two, and then he came up with the fourth ball. Maybe the first one he saw in this ball game. Roy Howell, the designated hitter, is 0 for 10 in this World Series. Uh, this redhead from California is due. Cardinals scored first in the fourth. Oglevy's homer tied it in the fifth. Sixth inning was the big inning as the Brewers got two, but Cardinals came back to score three. Fly to left field and hit well. Lonnie Smith makes the catch. Slicing back off the bat of the left hander and with a little bit of the wind curves. What a fantastic recovery he made when he first into the wall. He did one thing right, and that's the only thing that counts, and that is catch the ball. He broke wrong, he turned wrong, he staggered, but he stayed with it and made a tremendous play. He couldn't have stretched any farther. And enough leather to take an extra base hit away from Howell. There's two out. Charlie Moore. Ball one. Moore has grounded both times to second. Now Bruce Souter is going to get up. 
He removed his jacket very quickly and he has begun to throw. One and one. Suter just now throwing his second warm up pitch. Herzog's got that man figured out. And for some reason, the magic number 39 pitches keeps coming up with Herzog. He says, for some reason, around 39, I kind of start watching him. He gets in the ball game. I don't know why that is. Grounded toward the hole. That's going to be a base hit for Charlie Moore. Ozzie Smith wisely not throwing it. Didn't want to risk an overthrow that would have put Moore in I'm scoring position with two up. And there's a case where Ramsey, the third baseman, looking for a possible bunt from Moore, but also standing right on the line, protecting against the double, conceding the single to his left. Another thing is they have so much confidence in Ozzie Smith's range. Look where Ramsey is. A half a step from the line, in with a bag. Play that way a little bit more in any situation with Ozzie Smith out there. Look how far he went to get that ball. Brings up Jim Gantner, the number nine hitter for the Brewers. It was Gantner's double to right center leading off the sixth inning that got the Brewers going in a two run inning. And Ohar on the comebacker. The inning is over. Went to blows. Andor threw his glove away. Lee Wire very alertly comes out and corrals Andor to prevent a battle game number seven. So Gander said something to him, Dick. He challenged him, probably called him a hot dog, very honest, or worse. And Lee Wire, with a great job, stops a fist fight. There's Hub Kettle. Here it is. I would bet that Gander's words were, you hot dog, because Anduar's a habit. When he retires the hitter, he'll shoot him down with, a, with his fingers and then blow the smoke away. Lanier there, but Lee Wire, very alert. So the Brewer seventh inning comes to a fiery end. The Cardinals lead at the stretch half of the seventh by one. Yeah. Last of the seventh inning because of the last of the seventh inning and because of the skirmish or near skirmish at the end of the top half of the inning. A little late getting to the commercial. So one batter, Willie McGee, swinging at the first pitch as grounded to second. One out, last of the seventh. Four to three, St. Louis. Here's Joe Garciola. Okay, Dick. Tommy Hur is the batter, and Tom Seaver noted that Whitey Herzog is pointed to Suter already. After the skirmish, Joe, coming off with Joaquin Andahar. Whitey pointed down to the bullpen and said that Bruce Sutter was indeed in the game. He wasn't going to have a take a chance of sending Andujar back out to the mound when his emotional level was at a peak. Of course, Bruce Sutter just needs a six out, so Bruce will be in the ball game. He is in from the bullpen, as you see already. One strike to count. Line drive. Robin Young has it. There are two outs. Number one, shortstop. Two outs. The man who has helped curb the temper of Joaquin Andujar, Hub Kettle, who has tried to keep his emotional level on more of an evil keel, wasn't out there to stop this exchange between Gatner, who I think really triggered it. And Ozzie Smith is there, but he's not getting between two of the big guys. It's Lee Wire who really stopped it. Ozzie Smith, ball one. I'm sure any umpire could have taken charge, but Lee Wire, who could rent that back out as a billboard a big size guy really broke it up in a hurry and took charge one ball one strike two outs nobody on we're in the bottom of the seventh inning the Cardinals four Milwaukee three and Joe that's something like a good player a good umpire there's Andujar he has to sense he has to see it has to see it coming before it occurs and wired in one ball two strikes Boy, you have to get excited in anticipation of what's coming up in the eighth inning. The top of that Milwaukee batting order. Molitor, Yount, and Cooper facing Bruce Suter. 
One ball, two strikes, two outs. Gantner, big hop, easy play. It is one, two, three, and we complete seven innings, and here's Hub Kittle. Right in the middle of it, Hub Kittle, walking on to her, actually calls Hub Kittle daddy. Kittle had him in the Dominican Republic. Hub Kittle saying, let him alone, back off, and it quickly pushes Levar. So at the end of seven, it's four to three, Cardinals leading Milwaukee. Bruce Souter will be facing Paul Molitor, Robin Yount, and Cecil Cooper. Top of the eighth inning, Cardinals four, Milwaukee three. Molitor bunts it foul, strike one. Ramsey at third base is guarding the line. There you see him. As Hernandez will be on the other side of the diamond. Take the double away. Bruce Souter, postseason record. He's the man at Whitey Herzog just, just didn't hesitate. He went right to him. He's got to nail it down for him. Listen to the crowd. Two strikes on Paul Molitor. Top of the Milwaukee lineup. One ball, two strikes, and Suter, so used to pitching off the stretch with nobody on, here in the eighth inning is still working off the stretch. Ozzy Smith, one out. One man out, Robin Yount, the batter. Yount had a base hit in the sixth. He is one for three tonight. Yount, a pretty good low ball hitter, as is Cooper, the man to follow. Have to get those arms out. Suter, try and keep that split fingered fastball low. A strike. A lot of room in right center field, and they're moving Willie McGee over now. He was way over to left center. Yout, it's a lot of balls to right center, even some down the line. We've seen that in this series. <laughs> left and center fielders, Ronnie Smith and McGee playing very deeply to try and protect the gap. They'll concede a little looping single. Line drive in front, but take away the double in the alleys. Two strikes to count, 53,723, and right now they're chanting, Bruce, Bruce. Foul ball out of play. Count remains at strike two. One man out, nobody on, top of the eighth. Cardinals four, Milwaukee three. Seventh game of the World Series. The on deck batter, Cecil Cooper. Remember, Cooper homered off Suter in Milwaukee. So Cooper, we've just got the official word as to what happened between Gettner and uh, Andujar, and as Tony said and called it right on the nose, Gettner had called Andujar a hot dog, and that started it. Bouncing ball. Three outs.
Bottom of the eighth inning. Lonnie Smith will lead it off. And should this score remain the same, tonight's NBC Miller High Life Outstanding Player of the Game would be Keith Hernandez. And Miller High Life is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Hernandez to the Special Olympics. That is for tonight's game. Now, there's a World Series Most Valuable Player that has to be chosen. And we are debating that right now. Lonnie Smith, right field. Charlie Moore near the line. He cannot get it. Two base hit. It bounced out of the ballpark. running that had a possibility of being a triple that ball ricocheted around the wall Ramsey right now well if he's trying to set up ball. for the bunt probably Ramsey Simmons talking to his pitcher he knows Ramsey they have to get him over to third base to try to pick it up with the sacrifice fly this crowd is really reacting bottom of the eighth Nobody out. Lonnie Smith at second. There you see the defense. Run it. Wow. Strike one. And Joe, too often during the 162 game schedule, as Lonnie Smith goes back to second, the utility man like Ramsey is overlooked. He filled in for Obergefell when he was hurt, did a good job, got some key hits. Her, and late in the season when Ozzie Smith missed a lot of ball games, he was in there at times. Very valuable over the long haul, Ramsey. Cooper is really in close at first base, as is Molitor at third. Strike two, foul tip. Two strikes, and now he takes a look at Hiller. Nobody out. Smith on at second, bottom of the eighth. As we look to the ninth inning for Milwaukee, it'll be Simmons, Ogilvy, and Thomas. All three capable of the home run against Bruce Souter. strikeout Ramsey out on strikes and it brings up Keith Hernandez he might have done that on his own that's before that was thrown so hard maybe did not feel he could pull the ball so he said well I'll take it about myself he's out I'm gonna give him a walk see Harvey Keen motioning four fingers to put him on to set up the double play George Hendrick is the on deck batter and Hernandez will draw the intentional walk Getting closer to the plate. He isn't doing what he does in the regular season. <laughs> Talked about that. He usually put that bat next to him, and you never know when a guy's liable to get close. He's moved up on the plate. He usually puts it straight down, stands very nonchalantly in the batter's box. <laughs> Not in game seven, though. So Hernandez is on, and here is George Henry. Great piece of hitting the last time up. One ball, 
two strikes and drill the ball in the hole between second and first. One man out. Lonnie Smith is on at second base. Hernandez is on at first. Four to three. We're in the bottom of the ace. St. Louis leading. Started the floor now moves Haas. He's high fly ball, short center field. Gorman Thomas waiting for it, makes the play. So there are two outs. Hey, Lonnie Smith had an idea on that last one. Robin Yacht was decoying him, and Lonnie had an idea of going and trying to steal third. Here comes Harvey Keene out of the Milwaukee dugout. He's got Porter, left-hander, coming up, and then Braun in the DH slot, another left-hander. And there's Caldwell. He's been loosening up, along with Ladd, a right-hander. Harvey Keene looks like he's going to make a pitching change here. He's made more pitching changes in game number seven in this World Series than he really has made most of the year. Or the previous six games in this series anyway. One of the things he said when he took over, I don't like to make that long trip to the mound. There's the indication. So we've got a break in the action here with two outs at the bottom of the eighth, four to three. The Cardinals leading. We'll be back after these messages. Here comes Caldwell. Mike Caldwell is the new pitcher here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two men out. Base runners are at first and second. Lonnie Smith at second, and Hernandez is on at first. And Caldwell. Who's already won two games, and it sure reminds me of Harry Brekeen in the 46 World Series. Murray Dixon had done a tremendous job, and Brekeen came on in relief and won it in 46. And of course, there's the list. Lou Burnett won three games in 57. Bob Gibson in 67, and Mickey Lolich in 68. So Mike Caldwell is on the mound for the Brewers. And keep in mind, in that ninth inning, Simmons, Ogilvy, and Thomas. Here is Daryl Porter against Mike Caldwell, two outs. They have really swung around for Porter in the outfield. The center fielder, Gorman Thomas, look at your picture where Gorman Thomas is. Look at the room in center field. That's a great shot. You can almost ground a single up the middle that would roll all the way to the center field fence. Robin Young was out of position as the pitch was delivered. Caldwell got it inside to Porter. Well, I got a chance here. Maybe it is self-serving, but we've had some great pictures. And Michael Weissman, George Finkel, our producers, Harry Coyle, and all the camera crew. Great job, guys. Line drive, right field, base hit. Here comes Smith. The throw to the plate. It is not in time. Hit. 
One strike on Steve Braun. A foul ball strike two. Tony Kubek has made his way to the clubhouse. And at this point, he doesn't know which one. But it is such a mad rush to get down there after the game that Tony has gone down. Two strike pitch. Line drive, center field, base hit. Hernandez scores six to three. beginning to celebrate Joe and they're trying to make it easy for Bruce Souter. Six to three to score the Cardinals leading Milwaukee. Here's Willie McGee. There are two outs. Porter's at second. Braun is at first. Bouncing ball to Gantner. Should end the inning. It does. For the Cardinals score two and as we complete eight innings the score here St. Louis six Milwaukee three and the important man for Milwaukee in the ninth inning as they face Bruce Suter it's Ted Simmons Ben Oakleby and Gorman Thomas Ted Simmons leads it off count 53,723 and they've all turned umpires rooters 6-3 Cardinals lead service here one out here's Oglevy and a home run in the fifth one strike one out, nobody on. All chanting suitor, suit, suit. One ball and one strike, one out. The Brewers who have battled all year. strikes their owner calls every Brewer game a stress test two outs away it's going to be a second out it is
Kevin Thomas, the fans will tell you. One ball, one strike, the count, 6-3 the score. Two outs in the ninth. Two balls and a strike. Two outs, top of the ninth, St. Louis six, Milwaukee three, seventh game of the World Series. Thomas against Bruce Souter.
All right, thank you, Joe. And all the principals are here. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn, August Bush Jr., the owner of the Cardinals, Whitey Herzog. Behind me, Daryl Porter, along with the general manager, Joe McDonald. Porter, of course, voted the most valuable player of the series and for the presentation of the championship trophy, Commissioner Kuhn. Gussie, to you, Whitey, to you, Daryl, to you and all your teammates, Joe, to you as general manager, the trophy that says you're champions of the world and you deserve it. Uh, thank you, boy. Thank, thank you very it. much, my friend. That's marvelous. Whitey? Well, I just uh, don't know what to say. It's just uh, hit me kind of quick here, and uh, we're very happy about it, and just so we could bring a world championship to St. Louis and for the greatest guy in the world, Mr. Bush. You got it down to a situation where it was a one-run game and Bruce Souter came in. If you had a master plan a couple of years ago, you couldn't have asked for more than that. Well, Joaquin did a great job. He hadn't been able to run in five days. He went out and gave us seven good innings. and I wanted to get to Bruce Souter in the eighth and ninth, and because he went out there with a lot of guts, that we were able to do it. It wasn't supposed to go this way, Whitey, on form, but you had to come from behind to win a couple of games. Well, we did, and uh, our ball club never quit all year. We came out last night smoking with a rookie pitch, and he did a great job. And tonight, uh, they jumped out 3-1 uh, to one on us, and we came right back and got some runs. But uh, it's a credit to the whole ball club. Congratulations, Whitey. Thank you, Bobby. Daryl Porter, the most valuable player of this World Series. Daryl, congratulations on being named MVP after a tough regular season. You really broke loose in the playoffs and World Series. Well, I did okay. Uh, it was fun. I'll tell you, it was the most fun I've had playing baseball in my whole career. No question about it. It's a great feeling. Was it even fun in the seventh game, trailing 3-1, to one, or was the tension a bit much then? No, it was pretty much fun right there, too. I tell you, it was just exciting. It, I mean, it's the way the series has went, and uh, I didn't like the situation right there, but uh, we've got some, we got some, some people that can play this game, and, and uh, you know, we weren't afraid anyway. We felt like we had a good chance to come back. We had four innings left. Congratulations on being named MVP. Thanks. That's just so wonderful. I can't believe it. <laughs> We're coming back down to this happy Cardinal Clubhouse in a few moments, but right now, back upstairs to Joe Garagiola. Joe? Okay, Bob Costas. Well, Whitey Herzog said his club didn't quit, and you can say that for the Milwaukee Brewers. They didn't quit either. Seventh game, the Cardinals, the world's champions, the final score, St. Louis 6 and Milwaukee 3.